Hey guys, this is Fomi here with a quick tip video for Utaite resources. Today I want to talk about something that I use to help vocals cut through a mix. This is a very common problem because you'll have an instrumental that's already mastered, it's really loud and really busy, and it's difficult to get the vocals to cut through the mix. So I want to show just a, a quick trick that you can use. It'll seem a little bit complicated at first, but once you have it set up, it will make your life a lot easier. So what are some of the different approaches that people normally use for this type of thing? Um, I see a lot of people, they'll put a EQ on the instrumental, maybe scoop out some of the mid frequencies in the instrumental to allow the vocals to come through. Uh, I think one of the issues with that kind of approach is you're kind of messing with the instrumental a lot. So when the vocals are not there, sometimes the instrument, instr instrumental will lack body because you've scooped out the, the mids of it. Uh, another approach is maybe you can put a multiband compressor on the instrumental so that you know certain frequencies that clash with the vocals will never go over a certain loudness. The issue with this approach is that you know you're cutting the instrument too much, and also it's not really allowing the instrumental to interact with the vocals. So the ideal way you want to do this is only when the vocals come in, you want the instrumental to back off a little bit, but you want it to back off in a transparent and natural sounding way that doesn't sound really obvious. You don't want it so that when the vocals come in, suddenly instrumentals disappear. So that's where this technique is very powerful. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll show you a project that I've been working on. Uh, this is not, not that I've been working on. This is a project that I already did a long time ago. Um, but this is just to illustrate the kind of issue that you might have. So here's an instrumental track and here's a vocal track. As you can tell, the instrumental track is really loud and the vocals have a hard time cutting through. So it's, this instrumental is very busy. A lot of stuff going on. And I want this vocal to be able to peek through a little bit more. We're going to use a technique called sidechain multiband compression. Um, and what this is going to allow you to do is in response to the vocal volume, duck certain frequencies of the instrumental to allow the vocals to come in, come through only when the singer is, is there and not when the singer is not singing. Um, and on top of that, we're going to add another layer of detail to this, and the, that is center side processing. So when the vocals come in, we're going to have it cut some of the frequencies the vocals are in, but only in the center of the stereo field, leaving the sides untouched so that you know the guitars and strings or other instruments that are you know kind of enveloping the vocals are not affected that much um, while only like the stuff right in the middle is ducked a little bit to allow the vocals to peek through well you can actually do this all using free plugins that are included with reaper so this is kind of a reaper tutorial it'll also work if you're using other daws but i'm just going to be showing it for reaper so the first thing you want to do is take the instrumental track Normally it's routed to the master so that you can hear it. We're going to disable that. I'm going to go to the routing here and remove the master send. Then we're going to go to track channels. By default, it's going to be two channels. It's a stereo, you know, it's a stereo track, so it's going to be two channels. We're going to actually change that to six channels. Like that. Then I'm going to insert a plugin called three band splitter js three band splitter we're going to insert that now what this splitter plugin does is that it takes this track and then reroutes it into three stereo channels what we have here um, are basically the boundaries of these three different stereo channels so the three stereo channels are going to be lows which are going to be channels one and two mids, which are going to be channels 3 and 4, and highs, which are channels channels 5 and 6. And we can kind of adjust where the cutoffs for these frequencies are. So the, what I think is appropriate for vocals, um, I'm going to probably going to make this something like 500 to maybe 2200. 2200. Um, and this is going to be uh, between 500 and 2200 is going to be uh, what this program is going to call quote unquote mid. So lows are going to be everything under 500. Mid is between 500 and 2200. And highs are everything above 2200. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we have to create the channels 
that these three stereo channels are going to go to, or we have to create the tracks that they're going to go to. So right now, because we've disabled master send, you will not hear anything from this track. It'll be mute. So it'll be a completely silent track. And it's going to be silent until you tell those three stereo channels to go somewhere. So let's go ahead and create those destination tracks. So I'm going to create three new tracks. This one's going to be called low, mid, and high. Then we will go into the routing of this instrumental that we have this splitter effect on. And we will create three sends going to low, mid, and high respectively. Send one's going to go to low, then we're going to have another one go to mid, and another one go to high. Now if you go back to this plugin, you can see that it tells you what channels are going to what. So it says low is 1 plus 2, so stereo channel is 1 and 2. So then mid is the 3 and 4, and high is the 5 and 6. And so we have to tell the routing to follow those uh, destinations. So we're going to have uh, low, we're going to have um, channels 1 and 2 from the instrumental go to channels 1 and 2 of the low track because that's, that's what we said was going to be low. But then for mid, we have to change this audio input to stereo source 3 and 4. So channels 3 and 4 from the instrumental track are going to channels 1 and 2 of the destination track. And then for highs, we're going to make it 5 and 6. All right. So now, because we have these destinations set up, we before could not hear this track, but now we have this, this, these tracks set up, you'll be able to hear it. Cool. So it should sound exactly the way it sounded before, because all it is is splitting this track into three uh, different like regions of EQ, and then sending it out to these three tracks. So if you, you know, you can even solo these individual tracks to hear how it sounds like. So this is, this is just a low. This is just the mid. And this is just the high. So this is pretty cool. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to choose this mid channel as the channel that's going to get ducked in response to the vocal input. So we're going to put um, a compressor on this channel. But before we put a compressor, we're going to do something cool. Okay, this is where the magic happens. We're going to put in something called uh, mid side decoder and encoder. I'm going to put both of these in. So it should be ordered encoder first, then followed by decoder. Now, what is this doing? Um, this is going to take all the mid frequencies of this track, and then it's going to separate the stuff that's in the center field from the stuff that's on the sides. So this is a little bit confusing because we have two different mids, uh, and they mean totally different things. So you know, the mid in the EQ perspective is talking about middle frequencies. But from mid-side perspective, mid is talking about the center of the stereo field. So the center of the stereo field is usually where the vocals reside. Um, so what we want to do is be able to independently compress the center separately from the sides. Um, and then what a decoder does is it basically uh, takes that separated signal and combines it back together. So again, the encoder separates that signal and it puts everything from the center, it'll put that in channel one and everything on the sides in channel two, which in other words, it puts the mid sounds on the left side and it'll put the side sounds on the right side. And then the decoder will take that and put it back to the way it was. Okay, now that you have this, let's apply the compression. So we're gonna put a compressor only on the center frequencies or the mid. So between these two, we're going to add another effect. We're going to add just any compressor. I'm going to use Recomp because it's the one that comes with Reaper. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Recomp. And we're going to put this in between the encoder and the decoder. Come on. All right. Now we want to set this to only compress the center frequencies. And like I said before, what the encoder does, it'll put the center on channel one and put the sides on channel two, which means you want recomped to only compress channel one. So the way you can do that is you go to the routing of the effect here and you just unselect 
channel 2. So it's only going to compress channel 1, or the left side. And what will happen is, after it finishes compressing, the decoder will recombine your signal that's been separated into left and right and put it back to the way it was. Okay. Another thing you got to do is, for this mid-track, we have to change the number of channels that it has. By default, it's going to be two channels as a stereo track, but we have to change it to four channels. And the reason why we change it to four channels is because of the side chaining. So what exactly is side chaining? Side chaining just means that an effect is being triggered by an input other than the input of the track itself that it's on. So for this mid uh, track, we want it to get compressed in response to the vocals. And the vocals are on a different track. So how do we get it to do that? First thing we do is, on Recomp, where it says Detector Input, we change the main input to Auxiliary Input. Auxiliary Input means that it's going to be looking for a signal from channels 3 and 4 instead of channels 1 and 2. And we have to also route it to accept vocals as channels 3 and 4. So we're going to go to the routing. And then we are going in the receives, we're going to add vocals. And then vocals, we're going to take the vocal channel one and two from the one and two of vocals and put it into the three and four of this track. Um, and now we should have everything set up to be able to do our side chain compression. So what you'll hopefully see now is that this meter, it only comes up when there are vocals, and when there are no vocals, you won't see any meter. See, as you can see, it was when the vocals come in, this metering goes up, which means that this compressor is responding to the vocals now. And so now you see what we're doing, right? Uh, when the vocals come in, the compressor's gonna pick that up, and then it's going to start cutting the mid frequencies of the center channel of the instrumental. So it's only barely touching the instrumental. It's leaving the sides alone and leaving the high and low frequencies alone. It's only cutting out the middle frequencies of the center channel. And this way you'll get a very like natural sounding kind of transparent uh, cut to the instrumental that won't sound super jarring. And the rest is just kind of figuring out what threshold and what ratio you want to set to get the desired amount of ducking. So looking at this, I'll, I'll lower the threshold to be, you know, a little bit lower than th what the input of the vocals is. And then I'm going to adjust the ratio. Let's make it, you know, just for the sake of demonstration, uh, two, two to one, which is, you know, a good amount of compression. And you can see on this meter over here, that red is the amount that the, the center uh, uh, mid frequencies are being reduced when the vocals come in. Like, and you can really exaggerate this effect. Like, if I put the threshold all the way down, it'll really cut the mids. And I can exaggerate it by making the ratio higher too. I can make it like let's let's push it really loud just so you can see. without it. With it. So this is an exaggerated case, of course. I'm just doing it to illustrate uh, what it's doing to the sound. It sounds almost a little bit thin right now because we've completely cut out the mids when the vocals come in. But you can adjust this to taste, so. Maybe something like that. And then you can do other things like adjust the attack and release. The attack, of course, is how fast the compression kicks in. The release is after the vocals go away, how fast does it decompress, so to speak. And so if there are parts of the song where uh, like the vocals disappear and then uh, it'll sound like the instrumental suddenly like gets louder, um, you can make the release longer so that it's more gradual and doesn't seem as uh, obvious. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of trick that I use for a lot of chorus mixing and solo mixing to help the vocals 
just cut through the mix. And once you set this up, it's like fully automated. You don't have to go in and you know set all the envelopes yourself. You can just let this run. You can adjust the threshold, adjust the ratio, and it really makes your life a lot easier. And with that, um, I'll conclude this quick tip for using um, sidechain multiband compression for helping vocals cut through a mix. And um, see you guys next time.